So I apologize for the voiceover you're about to hear, but I can't find my microphone adapter for my GoPro 8. So we're just going to have to wing this, guys. Welcome new subscribers. Welcome back returning subscribers. I'm so grateful you clicked and are riding along with me. It's late October, nearly Halloween. Let me ask you a question. What scares you? Is it not accomplishing your goals of failure or maybe of loss, losing a loved one? Are you afraid of pain? It's not that I'm afraid of heights. It's the pain involved if I fall from that high up. Although for a lot of people, I think they're afraid of change. At the very least, they're not a fan of it. Even though change really is the only thing that remains constant in our lives. Isn't that funny? Last week, Jochen Zeitz, Harley's CEO, told Bloomberg in an interview that the company is rethinking its headquarters, planning to repurpose the 500,000 square foot original factory turned into office buildings and training center later this year. To which a lot of my friends have said that the news came as a disgrace. That article primarily talks about having company employees work remotely and, when done correctly, how that enables companies to bring the best employees to the table no matter where they currently call home. For those that don't know, Bill Harley and Arthur Davidson, and then later joined by Arthur's brothers, William and Walter, got their start in a little 10 by 15 backyard shed over a century ago. That shed gave way to a larger 40 by 60 building on Chestnut Avenue that would become Juno Avenue, but they quickly outgrew that as well. By 1914, the factory had become the five-story brick building we know today as the world headquarters for Harley-Davidson. Unlike another motorcycle manufacturer, Harley has been in continuous operation since they began. That's going on 120 years. They have survived numerous ownership arrangements, subsidiary arrangements, periods of poor economic health and product quality, and intense global competition to become one of the world's largest motorcycle manufacturers and an iconic brand widely known for its loyal following. What in the world could Herzites be thinking? Back P2C, I had the pleasure of going to Milwaukee. The first time was for the 115th anniversary celebration in 2018, and the second was just one year later for the Motor Company's annual dealer meeting that announced the 2020 model year. Both times I went, I rode out on my trusty 115th anniversary heritage and had an absolute blast. Both times I went, the majority of the festivities were held not at the headquarters, but at the HD Museum campus. And I can tell you that Harley definitely knows how to throw a party. But before coming home in 2019, I did go over to the Juno Avenue site to see where it all began. It's not anything you can tour like the museum is. In fact, you won't get past the front desk unless you have an appointment. But while I was there in the early morning taking pictures, a company employee asked what I was doing there. I literally replied, this is my Graceland, sir. I am here for the dealer meeting. I'm the marketing manager for FX Capra Harley Davidson, and I just had to see the Harley headquarters. That man took pity on me and, since he had some time before work, gave me a quick tour. I had a 110 horsepower smile that lasted the 1200 miles back home, I can tell you that. Even though the building is now offices instead of manufacturing, each floor kept pieces of equipment that spoke of its past. It also houses technical support and training facilities to teach mechanics the proper way to wrench on the bikes. That's been going on since the days of World War I. So again, why just give up all that history? And again, the subject of that Bloomberg article was about how employers are trying to get employees to come back to the office. How other companies, such as Apple, GM, and Goldman Sachs, are telling employees they need to come back. Tesla even saying failure to be back at the office 40 hours a week would mean resignation. That's a bit harsh, Elon. 
In his LinkedIn post about the article, Jochen explains the reason why he's embracing hybrid work, that Harley provides their employees with the right infrastructure, support, and guidance that they need to be the best employees that they can be. By putting more trust in our people and their ability to decide what hybrid structure works for them, Jochen said, whether that be in our offices, shared working remotes, or at home, Harley-Davidson will continue to enable both a remote and on-site infrastructure that allows our people to do their jobs effectively. After reading the Breakthrough Challenge by Jochen Zeitz and John Elkington, I can tell you that this move is a page right out of that book. How the most important goal for business must be redefining the bottom line, putting people and planet first. Forcing employees to go back to work or having that 500,000 square foot facility empty just would not work well for anyone. Harley gets much more engagement by trusting their employees and counting what they actually deliver compared to counting how many hours they're in the office staring at a computer screen. In that same LinkedIn post, Jochen was quick to point out that they are not abandoning Harley Davidson's roots or heritage. In fact, in case you haven't heard, the motor company will be celebrating its 120th anniversary next year, July 13th through the 16th, 2023. I've already made my hotel reservations and I'm looking forward to being back home once again. So, in conclusion, Harley-Davidson Motor Company, a Milwaukee-born U.S. company with a global workforce, will continue to go on. And I am also proud to work at a dealership that represents a company that is as forward-thinking and employee-centric as Harley is. What are your thoughts? Do you currently work from home, go into the office, have a hybrid situation? And do you embrace change, giving up the old when it no longer works for you? Are you happy to change things up? Or do you hold on to the past and the way we used to do things? Let me know in the comments below. Not only does it help the algorithm, I also truly want to hear what you've got to say. And until next time, guys, please be safe. Be kind to one another, especially when they have to go to work. Ride when you can and have fun. <laughs>